Hello, everybody coming in. Hello. I'll just wait a few minutes for everybody to come in. Hi, Ekta. Hello. This is the first time anybody's been invited into my bedroom in Wales. So this is a little special. Uh -huh. Ekta, how ready are you for the pageant? Very ready. Fully yeah. ready. Did you say ready, ready? Yes, I, I'll share. I'll share five of the 20, 20 banners that got delivered. Let me share those. Okay, I'm just busy letting everybody in. And I'm gonna mute my phone as well. And I'm recording this, so hopefully I'll be able to find it tonight. Apologies to Anybody that joined us for the last few weeks because I couldn't find it on my computer. So I don't know what happened. Anyway, we're recording tonight. So, Ekta, do you want to kick off with anyone, anything or do you just want to wait for a few minutes? Normally, we wait like two or three minutes after the hour yes. to make sure everyone's in. Yes, let's wait. Um, I had my bridal shower yesterday. How was it? Amazing. I had um, obviously Marcella, my best friend um, who has cancer, couldn't come over. And then I had another bridesmaid, Megan, who couldn't come over. But other than that, there were a lot of my bridesmaids there. I think I have about 14. 14, <laughs> wow. Well, that's the problem when you're a beauty queen, you have friends all over the world, right? So you want so many people there. But I will be yeah. doing um, a wedding in Wales and a wedding in LA. So you, actor, of course, are invited to both. Thank you. I will be here. <laughs> I'm trying to share an image in the chat, and it doesn't give me the option that it used to give me last time. Uh, do you want to text it to me? You should be able to put it in. Okay, let me send it to you. And then I'll airdrop it to my computer. Gills, mm -hmm. does everybody want to put their camera on so we can say hi? I'll just let some more people in. Hello. Hi. Jay, do you get any hair done? I sure am. I'm getting my Keratin Bond extensions. This is Caitlin, my hairstylist. Hi. Hi. Okay, I'm just going to grab this. Wow. Let me grab this photo and I will airdrop it to my computer and then share it. Okay, let's just wait a few more minutes. It's just one minute past. Okay. Let me just grab this. These are the banners for the pattern. Is that right, Ekta? Yes. Five, yes, these are five. I have a 20. Wow. I love the size of them. Beautiful. That's one of my Thank favorite you. photos of Sri when she points to the sky. I've seen a few girls when they win do that. And for me, being a Christian, I just, you know, whether you're a Christian, whether you're not, whether you're any kind of believer, for me, I just feel... I love seeing a girl just do that because that for me is like I am humble to a greater power, whatever that is. That's just one of my favorite photos of Sri. It's almost like saying thank you, right? Like her gratitude. And that's one of the most beautiful things about Sri is how grateful she is. And I love that photo. So I'm glad you chose that, Ekta, as one of the banners. Yes, I was speaking with Jenny today morning. Yes. <laughs> She was asking, what's the one quality that you are looking for in your new Miss World America? And I said, a grateful heart above everything. Yeah. For me, the funny thing with um, pageants is sometimes the girls that don't win can get bitter or say nasty things or gossip. And for me, the proof is in the pudding. We have this expression in Wales where if somebody ends up 
not saying good things after the pageant, that for me is evidence that they weren't the right girl. Does that make sense? So at the end of the day, it's always about having such a beautiful heart because, and I'll repeat this, you probably saw this last time I was in, if you happen to be somebody that doesn't win this pageant, and let's face it, only one girl is going to, but if you're not a girl that wins, we're still your family because we're all going to go, oh my God, are you entering Miss USA next year? Are you going to enter Miss Earth? Or are you going to enter us again? So it's kind of like, it's such a small community just to always be nice and friendly to everybody because you just never know where you're going to end up next. You may end up wanting to be an actress and I know every casting director in LA and I'm because I've been dealing with them every day for seven years. And if one of them says to me, oh, this girl was a beauty queen. I know that you do all that, Liz. What's she like? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to hands down tell people whether I had a nice experience with that person or not. I'm Welsh and Welsh people are incredibly honest. We don't hold back on anything. And that's why a lot of my clients love me because I'll tell them, this is why you're not making it in Hollywood yet. And those kind of, you know, that kind of feedback that I give, you're probably not going to learn for 10 years in Hollywood. So I like saving people time, especially my clients. So Ekta, is there anything else you want to talk about before we go into maybe doing some questions, finding out where every girl is at? I know today was the deadline for the beauty with a purpose. I've been checking a lot of them out on the American Miss World uh, Instagram. So I'm really pleased with so many of them. But if anybody's still struggling with that, they're still recording. Um, are we still, actually, have we still got some outstanding? What did you say? Do we still have any beauty with a purpose videos outstanding? Yes, we do. Okay. Anybody on this call? Me, I do. I have my last one today. And, um, ready. I'm just going to mute Ohio. Were you talking to me? I just muted you. <laughs> okay, Ekta, anything you want to run through before I start firing some questions at the girls? You can yeah, start. I was saying that I was going to for you today. Okay. All right. Everybody's muted. Everybody's in that wants to come in today. Um, Athena, you've not submitted yours yet. What's the reason? Where are you? Athena, what's the reason? Do you want to come in vision? Hello. I'm so sorry. I'm at work right now. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the reason I've been working every single day, but it's almost done. It will be ready, of course, today. So, so excited to finally get that in. Okay, wonderful. Okay. I don't think Shree is going to join us today because it's way too late in India. It's, she's probably sleeping, correct, Ekta? No, she's hanging out with India's number one A-list celebrities. I did tell her to do that. You know, that's one of the things I did coach her on the other night. I said, you are in some absolute mega events and galas. Don't just stick with the Miss World team. Go and meet everybody that's famous in India. I yes, hanging out, so hanging out with a movie star with 45 million followers and then India's number one movie producer. So she sent me the images. Good. She listened to what I'm saying. I love yes. that. <laughs> okay, let's let's kickstart. Let's go around everybody. I'm literally going to say, for example, hi, Jade. And then I'm going to throw a question at you. So if everybody can come in vision and I want to see uh, maybe Athena, if you're at work, it may be too difficult for you. Just let us know if you can go in vision or not. Um, who's Ohio? Who's representing Ohio? I can see um, the audio is not working. Nikita is Ohio. Who? Let me find Nikita. Oh, Nikita. Nikita, of course. Okay, no worries. So I won't come to you. But let's just go around and introduce yourself. There will be some of the girls that have never seen you before. So big smiles. Um, everybody that wants to come in vision, come in vision. Anybody else that's not, anybody that's not in vision, I'm not going to come to you. But you're not going to learn if I don't come to you and put you on the spot. 
So let's go to Jade. I think this is my first time seeing you, Jade. So hi, Jade, tell us your name, your state, and an interesting fact about you that we wouldn't know. Sure. So I am Jade. I'm actually not from a state. I'm from the District of Columbia. So the nation's capital. And I guess a fun fact about me. Hmm. I went to Georgetown, but before I did that, I actually transferred from a community college. And a lot of people don't know that that's possible. I was actually one of two students in my whole cohort that was able to do that. And I graduated debt-free because of the scholarships that I was able to earn. Oh, congratulations. Don't forget. Thank you. See that is happening to you real time. Always say, by the way, I'm also just getting my head done right now because I'm back to back with my time. So anything that happens in the moment, if somebody trips on stage, you acknowledge them, you say, um, I don't know, you just say, I hope, hope you're okay. And then come back to the question, right? So always remember you're in the moment. So Jade, right now, if I was you to kind of get the judges loving me, I would have said, so I have an interesting fact about me, but I just want to excuse why my hairdresser is doing my hair at this time. I'm just busy. This is the only time I can do. My interesting fact is, right? That's how you win judges. Oh, perfect being in the moment and if you see anything if a child screams in the audience you acknowledge the child you come back does that make sense those Perfect. are just little nuances that will give you a step up because it shows the audience you can control yourself in that situation if somebody happened to run on stage and grab the crown don't go into my interesting fact is because everybody's just thinking she's just ignored what happened. So whatever's happening in real time, make sure you acknowledge it. And it's just a good little example for me to pick up on you having your hair done. Why are you having your hair done right now? Well, I actually wear extensions. So I'm getting my extensions redone. I do them twice a year and I just love them. It gives me a lot more volume and fullness and yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right, let's keep moving. We'll go to Victoria. Who are you? What, what state are you representing? And what's an interesting fact we wouldn't know? Hi, beautiful girls. I hope everyone's having a great Sunday. So my name is Victoria DeSorbo. I will be representing the beautiful state of Tennessee. And an interesting fact about me is I actually just got back from my grandfather's 90th birthday cruise celebration with my family about an hour ago. So I'm super, I feel tan, I feel relaxed, and I feel so grateful to be here with all my Miss World sisters. Okay, so if I was judging you right now, I love everything you did, but in my mind, I'd be thinking, hang on a minute, she's left me hanging on. Where did you go? Like every <laughs> now thinking, where was this cruise? Where did you go? So just make sure you give us what you think the judges want to know. Okay. Where did you go? I went to Honduras and a few stops in Mexico. See how interesting that is? I bet there's a lot of judges that may never have gone to Honduras. So that's really fun to know as well. Okay, let's move on. Hello, Guinness. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your most interesting thing we wouldn't know. Hello, uh, I'm Glennis. I am your Miss World America, Kansas. And an interesting fact about me is when I was in, um, when I was younger, I was actually homeschooled. And so that allowed me not only to advance academically, but also I got to spend six weeks in Costa Rica twice. So I was submerged in the culture. I was submerged in the language. I basically lived there and was able to live among the people and do something a little bit different than what we do in America. And so it was so exciting and so fun. I do miss it because now I'm in medical school and I have to work every day. But thank you all for being here. And it's so exciting to be with you all. Thank you, Glynis. Amazing answer. I love the fact we know about Costa Rica because that mm -hmm. can judges loads of things to kind of ask you more personal questions mm -hmm. if we get to a round where judges are asking questions and I know that you're the doctor here so yeah. congratulations I love Thank all you. this let's now go to Nikita hello Hey everyone so sorry I'm out getting my nails done with my mom it's her one day off like a month she works as a cashier at Kroger and I do visit her on her lunch break but we don't have time together so 
decided to get our nails done together. So my name is Nikita Sandella. I'm representing Ohio. An interesting fact about me, I also went to community college for a semester because I was kicked out of school because I couldn't pay my tuition. When I was in business school, I was kicked out, but I still wanted to go to school. So I actually enrolled in community college and then transferred into NYU. And another fun fact, if that's not interesting enough, I also belly dance. I'm a certified belly dancer. That yes. is really interesting. I no doubt a judge is going to ask you about that or a very clever host at some point is going to say, can you give us a move? So if I was a host on stage, I would say immediately, well, teach me something. Would you be able to do that? I lost you. We're not hearing you. Like a really basic hip drop, I could teach someone. Yeah. See, that is a lot for somebody to play with a host. I love that. And I know you go yeah. watch Miss Universe and Miss World in the past, and you will have seen somebody say, oh, I'm a singer. And you will have seen hosts gone, okay, give us give us a little rendition. It happens. Okay. But things like that give you a moment where you can show off and you can get brand new okay. points ahead. If anybody's a singer, you can always bring that up. If there's any little party trick you have, Unfortunately, my party trick used to be doing salsa dancing on top of tables and bottles. So that I wouldn't probably say. But just remember anything where you can just get ahead, singers. Um, I know I want to talk about Talent Ram with a lot of you at some point uh, today. Talent Ram is a tricky one because usually it's a singer or it's um, somebody playing an instrument that usually wins the Talent Ram. So I want to find out what everyone's doing. Uh, but let's keep moving. Thank you, Nikita. Hope your nails. Of course. Work. I need to show yeah. the color of your nails at some point. Okay, so make sure you show us. Let's go to Kiki. I think this is your first time coming on. So hello, Kiki. Who are you? What state are you representing? And tell us an interesting fact about you. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Khadija, but I also go by Kiki. That's my nickname. I am your Miss World America Northeast. And an interesting fact about me is I reside in New Haven, Connecticut, but I'm a little mix of things. I'm Jamaican, Guyanese, and Native American. And actually, when I was younger, the Native American name I was given was Quiet Waters, which I'm always excited to share because it's such an embodiment of my spirit as it symbolizes power, grace, and wisdom. And coming from a culturally diverse background just taught me to embrace our differences. And with that that being said, I actually started taking Taekwondo uh, a few months ago, and I just became an orange belt. So that I'm really excited about. It was kind of hard, but I'm happy I, I conquered through it. <laughs> Amazing. Again, you're giving the host something to go give us a move, which is going to give you that extra. So that's a great thing you add in that in. Um, I would also say you gave us so much stuff there that the judges in their mind are remembering you so every little nuance every little fact everything you're coming up with whether you're the doctor uh whether you've just gone on a cruise um the judges are going to remember these things and when they go into a room to deliberate they're going to say oh that was the girl that did the taekwondo i love that i do taekwondo so when the judges are deliberating <laughs> sometimes they like to find common things to start the discussion on with maybe the room. If they do do deliberation, now some judges are kept separate. So when I judged Miss World California, we were all kept separate. We weren't allowed to talk. Now, when I judged um, Miss Great Britain years ago, we all went into a room because we were all confused and we didn't know who we liked. We all liked different girls. There were 60 girls in that pageant. It's very hard to remember 60 girls really hard so these little things make huge differences so athena i'm presuming you don't want to come on you're the next person uh let's go to do i say hallie or Haley? tell us who you are in an interesting fact i could come on actually after her okay perfect let's go to Haley. yes hi everyone this is my first zoom call with everyone so it's nice to officially meet you guys excuse me i am in target my very close friend is having a baby shower here in a few 
hours. So I'm kind of got some gift wrapped and things to wrap up her presents that I got yesterday. So very excited about that. So that's why I'm here. Thank you guys for understanding my environment. But um, my name is Haley Dyer and I will be representing Miss World America Colorado. Very excited. And an interesting fact about me is I have been acting for about 15 years now, and most people immediately think film, but I have been a stage actor for uh, 10 years and a film actor for five. And I guess my favorite token of that is the person who mentored me and taught me most of what I know um, is a person who ran in my family. So my aunt, uh, her cousin, and then my uncle all got trained by the same person uh, that I got trained by. So we have this whole running system in our family where everybody is just so connected to the art. So that is a little fact about me. And I'm so glad to be here with you guys. I love that. So obviously a very creative family. I love the fact yeah. that I'm actually thinking, so I'll tell you as somebody that's watching, I'm going, I want to see the bags in your hand. Let us help you <laughs> Okay. yes so it's a baby girl I'm so oh, excited okay. yes so um this is where I'm going to put all of the clothes that I got and then obviously the diapers and the bottles and stuff like that so I was thinking purple flowers what do you guys think do we like I love the pink, pink for sure <laughs> yeah I agree she actually is trying to think of giving her daughter a full range of color scales she's like I don't want her to just be pink all the time even though we love it so I was trying to be a little more inclusive with the purple you know <laughs> we call it politically correct these days right yes politically correct yes <laughs> so my bridal shower last night was all pink and I didn't care I was having pink so that's the way it is um yeah, okay. Thank you, Hallie. I love that. I look forward yes. to seeing you at the pageant. pageant. Let's go yes. next then to Athena. Tell us your name, your state, and an interesting fact about you. Hello, everyone. This is my first time I've been able to come on here. So <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, my name is Athena Crosby. I am representing the state of Utah. That is where I went to college for four years. I studied at Utah Valley University, but I actually work and live here in Los Angeles. Um, I work at a production company. We make shows about celebrity news. Uh, it's called Hot in Hollywood. So Liz, next time you're in LA, we got to hang out, girl. Uh, that will <laughs> be about three weeks. I go back and forth every month. So I'm there. No yes, that would be fantastic. So yes, and that's actually part of the reason why I have not been able to hop on the Zooms the last two weeks is because I was working a film festival here in California called Cinequest because I'm one of the red carpet hosts and it was going, it was a very long two weeks. So I'm so glad to now be diving into Miss World and, and prepping for the pageant, which is coming up so quickly. And little fun fact about me, I'm actually a dual citizen. My mom is from Venezuela originally, and I have citizenship in both countries. So that's something that if I get the chance to go to Miss World, you know, I can uh, practice my Spanish with some of the other contestants. <laughs> okay, now we're all worried about you because when Hector, Hector and I are exactly the same age, same birthdays, within a few days, aren't we, Hector? We're like twins. You're my brunette Barbie. <laughs> I have to say that when we were young and I was in pageants, so in our 20s, right, Hector, Venezuela were cleaning up. They were like the strongest pageant nation. And I'll tell you why. A British girl would win a month before she went to Miss World or Miss Universe. A little bit like you guys. So me coaching the winner is going to be pretty tight, but we're going to get you there. We're going to get you winning, whoever the American girl is. Now, when we were young, Venezuela would win 11 months before she would go to the Miss World or the Miss Universe pageant. So they had so much time and there used to be rumors that cosmetically a lot of the girls were being changed. Now, 20 odd years ago, cos cosmetic kind of um, makeovers wasn't really allowed, wasn't talked about, wasn't the done thing. But we all knew the Venezuela, Venezuelan girls were so incredible and they were the best of the best. So you being a dual citizen with Venezuela, this is kind of in your blood. Your DNA is so strong to compete with students. <laughs> I'm now looking at you going, this girl's going to stand out. So the competition here, girls, you know it? Everybody's your best friend. But there's one girl that wants to beat, right? So her eyes are on you right now, Athena, okay? Just because uh oh, that's a lot of pressure. But, you know, I like that. 
I like that perspective. Maybe it is, you know, in my blood, but uh, I suppose the cards are the the cards are up in the air right now. But I like that. <laughs> That's true, but I don't think Venezuela has done as well as they were meant to be doing the last few years. So, so you have got it against you as well because all eyes used to be on Venezuela. Now we're looking at the Philippines and we're looking at India. So I'm probably not looking at Great Britain either, but they don't have me coaching them. That's why. Uh, okay, so Athena, well done. Love all that. Love how friendly you are. Who wants to go next? Gunita, are you going to come on camera? She's very good. No? Sorry. I'll give you five seconds while we go to... Is it Maria there? Majo Garcia? Tell us your name, your state, and something interesting about you. Hello, I'm Majo Garcia. I am Miss World America, Nebraska. And an interesting fact about me is that I lived in Mexico up until I was 19 years old. My family is actually still there. But I was a violinist player while I was in Mexico for the National Orchestra that used to play in the morning TV, in the TV news channel Azteca. Azteca Noticias. So I used to be on TV as a violinist player. I love that. How do I say your name? Majo. 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 So do yeah. that right? Majo. Okay, so you're the violinist. Okay, all eyes are on you now with the talent round. We're all thinking, damn, she's going to blow us away in the talent round. So if you're telling the judges that, we're all straight away. Woo! Okay. I love that. Um... I would say just increase your energy. I don't want you to get lost when you're talking. So I just want you to be bigger and brighter. Be a bit more animated because I almost look at you and get the impression you could be a little shy. I feel like you could be more shy than the other girls. So I want you to kind of remember that. And when you're giving the answers, just big it up a little bit. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's go to is it... How do I say? Listen, I'm going to call you Nikki. You tell me. <laughs> You're there doing your makeup. I love it. Okay. You're going to look fabulous. But right now I need you without the, the brush in your hand. Tell me your name, your state, and an interesting fact about you. Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. Uh, my name is NKG Okori. I am representing the state of Minnesota. I'm so happy to be with you, with you guys today. As you can see, I'm doing my makeup. I'm preparing for my last shoot for my Beauty with the Purpose, the last shot, sit down interview style. So I'm just doing the last part. Um, a fun fact about me is I am actually part Japanese, part Nigerian and Indian. And um, I have been playing the violin since I was five, but that will not be my talent. <laughs> so that's not your talent. What is your talent? I'm a robotics um, major, so I like to dabble with robotics and you guys are going to see something really fun and really hip with robots so just stay tuned wow that sounds really interesting you never know <laughs> something like new like that can come in and just win this talent round um great stuff uh jenny is our producer correct i haven't met you jenny yet hello you're gonna come on and say hi jenny yes Sorry, I'm working right now. Let me get on camera really quick. I'm doing like multiple things. Where is... Okay. Hi. Hi, Liz. How are you I think doing? it's the first time I've been on camera. So I... Hi, ladies. Hi, everyone. I am working on... I'm actually with Edka right now, and we are working on the pageant program book, and I'm going over a ton of things. There's a ton of deadlines that the girls, that the ladies need to get in, and I have like my list right here with all the... The girl's name and I'm checking everyone's name off to see who's turned in what so we are working hard and this is just I have an example program book right here that we're going through we have some old pageant books here and um, I will be helping prep some of the goodie bags for the ladies as well so um, there's a lot to do and a lot to get done but I'm excited and I'm, I'm um, just anticipating the pageant and to meet all of the wonderful girls so okay Thank you for coming on, Jenny. I was dying to meet you and see you face to face. So uh, running a pageant, producing a pageant, pageant is incredibly stressful. So kudos to you guys. Um, and uh, I can't wait to be there. Right, let's go. 
Let's go to Ania. Hello. Hi, ladies. I just wanted to hop on here and just say hello and honestly just congratulate everyone for being president, for being a contestant at the Miss World America pageant. Thank you so much, Liz, for being such a wonderful sponsor. I know the ladies are in good hands. And thank you to Miss Ikta for also reminding me to hop on here and just to say hello. I just wanted to show some support. Okay. Wonderful. Haminda, we come into you. Hello. Hello, can you guys hear me? We can do. Awesome. Well, it's great to finally um, show up to one of your meetings as I like as it clashed with my schedule in past weeks. Um, and so just to introduce myself, I am Harminder and I'm representing the state of Alaska. And um, what, what else was there again? It's Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, a fun fact. All right. So a fun fact about me is that I play the drums. Oh, wow. Okay. We're going to need more than that. So when you say you play the drums, we need more. You can't just give us that. Like the judges are like, well, what do you do? Do you wake the neighbors up? Are you super loud? What kind of music are you playing? How long have you been playing the drums? How did you learn the drums? How many, um, I don't even know drum language. How many drums are there in a whole kit? Tell us more. Sure. Yeah. So I've been playing for um, just over a year now. And um, the types of genres that I dabble with are mainly, um, they're mainly like, you know, pop or um, rock, etc. Like nothing too fancy, like jazz or metal or anything like that. Um, and as for how many drums there are in a kit, it varies a lot. So um, usually uh, the typical drum kit consists of uh, three toms, which are the ones that sound like boom, 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 boom. And then there's the snare, the one with the snappy sound. And then as for the cymbal, there are three of them. So there's the hi-hat, which either makes the t or the t sound. And then there's the crash cymbal, which makes that, tom, so that crash sound. And then there's the ride cymbal, which is like, it's more softer. It's like, tum or tum. so I mean it's kind of hard to describe with like you know with words uh but that's what a, a basic drum kit consists of I'm looking at it right now just just like just to remember which ones okay I love that so if a host or anybody comes to you before a pageant and says what would you like me to talk to you about what would you like me to ask you if you're ever in that place where you're lucky enough that the host is going to help you you say I'd like you to ask what my talent is and, and then you can go into this because you come alive when you explain in drums and I know nothing. So everything you just told me was so informative that if I was a judge, I would be sat there going, oh, wow, that's what it's called. That's what it does. That makes that sound. I would love you to talk about that on stage. It's so interesting. And it really is an interesting fact that other girls probably wouldn't have. I could probably say hands down, you'd be the only person you're probably the only person I've ever met in 30 years of pageants that has ever said that to me. So wow, really? Yeah. Is that your, that is your talent. That's what you're filming for the talent round, right? Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. I love that. Thanks, Arminda. Uh, Thank Mary, you. you've just jumped in. If you want to come in vision, Mary, I'm asking you to introduce yourself. What is your name? What state are you representing? And an interesting fact about yourself. Do you want to jump in? Mary, too soon, maybe too soon. Ah, hi, Mary. You need to unmute. Hi. Are you Can in, you hear me? Yeah, are you in Home Depot or something? Yes. Uh, so I'm currently uh, working from the office in Seattle. So um, my name is Mary Diaz, everybody. And I hope to see you guys here. Okay. All right, Mary, you just listen. You just watch us today. Good to see yes, you. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you all. Okay. okay, next question we're going to go to. We're going to go back to the beginning. The next question is a lead on from this. And it is, tell us something interesting that we wouldn't know about your state. Let's go to, I'll give you a minute. Ekta, would you be able to answer that? Do you want to tell us something interesting about Washington and Seattle? Just 
Seattle is home to Microsoft, Amazon, Starbucks, and Miss World America. Oh, I love the Starbucks. What's everybody's favorite Starbucks? I am a vanilla latte coconut milk. That's my one. Okay, is everybody ready? We're going to go around the room again. Um, I'll go backwards this time. Jade will get more, more time. Uh, Harminda, we'll start with you. Um, tell us an interesting fact that we may not know about your state. And tell us your state. So start my state. So if it was me, I'd say uh, my country is Wales. And everybody here can sing. We all play rugby. <laughs> and um, we're the place Princess Diana came from. I'd say, I don't know, something like that. Okay, so Haminda, let's go to you with Alaska. All right. So Alaska houses the iconic Northern Lights. Uh, it also houses uh, husky sledding competitions, as well as the North Pole. Okay, wonderful. We kind of need a little bit more than that. So when you go into um, the Northern Lights, say what time, of the, what time of the year that you traditionally would see them. When we go into the Huskies, maybe tell us how that works. So just elaborate a bit more. Let's do it again. Um, Harminda, tell us a little bit about your state and an interesting fact or facts. All right, so Alaska houses um, firstly the Northern Lights, and the Northern Lights are typically seen around um, late late uh, November to February, and then husky sledding is something that usually happens all year round, but typically more so during the winter months. And then also it houses a national park called Denali National Park, where uh, there are igloos. Uh, there, there's ice there, and then also famous landmarks uh, per, uh, per, pertaining to Alaska. I love that. So you're the home of igloos. For me, I've never seen an igloo. So for me, I'd be like, wow. Uh, my cousin flew to Los Angeles to stay with me around about February 10th one year. She happened to sit on the right of the plane, and she saw the northern lights as she was flying over Alaska. Sweet. So... It's absolutely amazing. Those are three incredible facts. I don't think you could have chosen any better facts than them. I think they were perfect to sum up exactly what Alaska is about. And if girls, you don't know what your state is famous for, do a Google and then personalize it into you. But Harminda, brilliant answer. Absolutely loved it. We just needed to embellish it a little bit more and more personal. And that was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, let's go to Nikki. You know, I'm struggling with that name. So tell us a little bit about your state and an interest in fact. Okay, so as you guys know, I'm from Minnesota. Yes, we are the headquarters of Target, but um, we actually have over 10,000 lakes. It's actually 12,000. They've discovered a couple more, but we also have over 100 waterfalls, and that's not the exact number. They're still finding new waterfalls every day. So if you guys are ever in Minnesota, you can check out the waterfalls during the winter and it will look like beautiful, icy, cascading drops. Or you can also come by in the spring and the summer and enjoy nice, fresh air and waterfalls. I love that. And don't forget to tell us your favorite lake and favorite waterfall. So the okay. rest of us are remembering, oh, I want to go there. Yes. Okay, my favorite waterfall is the Minnehaha Falls. How do I say that? Minnehaha. Minnehaha? Yeah, oh. it's like Minnehaha. Just remember, if there's any international judges on the pageant, this is a whole new language, right? So always kind of pronounce the word incredibly clear. It's a little bit like when you audition for commercials, you can be da 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 McDonald's. The brand, the name is always direct down the camera. It's the same with anything. If it's a national park, if it's the White House, you're always delivering the name, the brand, the title direct to the judges. Okay, so you can be talking to the audience. If there's a certain name you want them to remember, it's straight with eye contact. So I love that. Right. Jen is saying, I saw the 10,000 lakes on the license plates when I was in Minneapolis for work two weeks back. There you go. So yes. kind of interesting you could follow on that too 10,000 but now 12,000 okay let's go to Maho no Ma Maho 
though, an interesting fact about Nebraska is its name itself means flat water, and it comes from the Oto Indians, and it refers to the Platte River uh, that runs around Nebraska. So that's an interesting fact about the name itself. But I'd say the coolest fact about Nebraska is that they have the largest mammoth fossil um, displayed in the University of Nebraska State Museum. And I can, I can say that I learned that from Diane Morgan, who's an English actress that has Kunk on Earth, the show. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I love these. These are amazing facts. You girls are doing so well. Like the judges are literally going to go, wow, you're teaching us something. I mean, I'm sure the rest of you are just watching the other girls going, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I did know that about the 10,000 lakes. I didn't know there was 12,000. And then, wow. So Nebraska is an original Native American name. Yes. Yes. It means flat water. And like I said, it's the Platte River that runs around Nebraska. And that's where the name comes from. I love that. Okay. Let's go to next. Do we have Ganit? Come on. I'm just going to go to Girls in Vision because I know you're right. Oh, there you go. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm actually on my way to work, so that's why I was in the car. Um, so I am Gani Obroy. I'm representing the beautiful state of Maine. And a fun fact about Maine is that it um, is one of the only states with a national park in the northeastern um, United States. And also Maine is really famous for its lobster, um, as you guys might know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I honestly, I have more to learn about Maine because I've only been there for a short time, but in my time there, it's just been so scenic and so beautiful in all types of terrain. So it's just, it's a really beautiful state. I love that. I'm gonna give you a little bit of slack because you're in the car. So I know you're concentrating on that. Um, but just go a little bit further. So obviously we know about the, not this time, but when you're ready, if you're on stage and you get asked this, so give us, when you're on stage, you don't have to do this now, but maybe give us facts about lobster, like why we can find lobster anywhere around the world. So just make sure we understand exactly why Maine is famous for the lobster, because being Welsh, I actually know that it is a very famous place. That's where the best lobster comes from, but I want to know why. So make sure you do some research on why Maine. And then give us another thing about Maine when you're on stage. So just make sure you do your research. But I love, <laughs> yeah, I want to go and eat lobster in Maine as well. Road trip. Okay. Thank you, Gani. Nice to meet you. Okay, let's You as well. Thank you. Ha Haley? Are you there? Then we'll go to a Yes. Hi. Yes, I 100% am. I'm moving around a little bit. I know I I drove home, so it took me a second. Um, I was hoping to be back inside by the time I was I called. Back but, to you. Uh, you want me to come back? Yeah, yeah. I, I can go next after one person, if you don't mind. That'd be great, Liz. Perfect. Okay, let's go to Athena. Are you ready? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, just a reminder: I am representing Utah. <laughs> And I, I mean, there's so many wonderful things I could say about Utah, aside from the fact that it has the best snow on earth. Uh, one fun fact is, is that it actually ranks high in two categories. Number one is it's the number one state in America with a percentage of people who are bilingual or speak two or more languages. So out of any other state, more people speak two languages in Utah. And as somebody who's bilingual and biracial, it's absolutely perfect for me. I get plenty of opportunities to practice. And number two, Utah also ranks the highest out of any other state with the percentage of its population of volunteers. So more people volunteer in Utah, more people donate their money and their time to charity. And I actually love that because it aligns so perfectly with the Miss World America platform and what we find important competing in this pageant so that's definitely something that if given the chance to become Miss World America would be super advantageous and I'd be able to really spread the word in Utah because I know that that group of people would be on board so those are some things I love about it okay I love your answer but I feel like you were trying to impress the judges more with the personal volunteering and bringing it back to you. And there's a fine line between finding something that helps you win the judges over, but then also 
you need to still make sure you're specific to the answer. So in my head as a judge, I was going, well, that's great, but you're just trying to find a way to talk about the volunteering and the bilingual, and that's great. But I didn't really learn about Utah. So I feel, it's just my own opinion, the other girls watching may think differently, but my opinion if I was a judge was I wanted something a bit more like, okay, I know the snow is amazing, and I know I've been to Sundance, but there must be more things about Utah than just being personality driven. Does that make sense? Oh, for sure. I love that feedback. So find something geographically that's interesting. Like we know about the lakes, right? Find something geographically interesting and then go into. And also, did you know the people that are? Does that make sense? Yes. Don't lose the judges on don't because you would have lost me a little bit where I would have gone oh this has come back to uh relating it to your personality I see so maybe not not too technical (laughs) yeah maybe but you know what I'm saying right there's a fine line between using the question to not show off but using the question to explain why you're the great winner and let me just let Clarissa in uh, yeah, there's just a very fine line between highlighting the state and highlighting me. So almost you've got to do both. You've got to be very clever. So personally, I would say find something. I mean, I don't know much about Utah, but if I was suddenly talking about Utah, I would probably talk about uh, Clint Eastwood started Sundance, has put Utah on the map. Um, and did you know? Uh, Robert Redford. Robert Redford, sorry. Oh my goodness, I did know that. So yeah, exactly. I would find something geographically a little stronger on the state. But I love the talk. Everything is great. And I love the fact that you can use a question to showcase your own strengths. And there's a very fine line between doing that. And usually that's what a coach will do is they will explain to you, right, let's start the question off like this and then let's end it like that. Okay. So you're almost there with the snow. But then if, if a judge came from verbier in switzerland they would go no your snow is not the best our snow. Oh. right so you could be setting yourself up by saying our snow is the best because if there is a judge from switzerland they'll go oh no i don't like that so just be careful with saying anything is the best okay girls i promise you that's how judges think right let's go to thanks athena let's go to um kadisha um your state and an interesting fact about your state. Yes. Hello, everyone. So I'll be representing the Northeast as Miss World America Northeast, but I reside in New Haven, Connecticut. And Connecticut is home of the first ever hamburgers created. And New Haven, Connecticut is known for the best pizza. Although you did say don't say best, sorry. But um, we do have the world famous Frank Pepe's pizza. And I love to eat so that makes sense why I'm from Connecticut. <laughs> okay, so here's how you handle it. You say, so what, what was Connecticut famous for? The best pizza or the best what? Uh, the best pizza. We're home for the first ever hamburger. And then we have like the famous Sally's and Frank Pepe's pizza. Okay, so here's how you handle it. You say, um, so Connecticut is known for having, for being the first hamburger, but also the best pizza. But that is subjective. But anybody coming from Connecticut will tell you that the pizza beats anything hands down and probably beats Rome, but it's still open for debate. That's I like that. Just remember that whatever you say, even if you got asked a question about Trump, right? And I'm going to tell you right now, half the room may go this way, half the room may go that way. Whatever you get asked, you can handle anything as long as you sit on the fence and you're diplomatic. You will say something like, well, everything's debatable and everybody yeah, everybody has a different opinion. It's subjective. I'm not going to tell you mine tonight. Uh, I know exactly how I will vote, um, but I will tell you, I just think we all need better communication and we must, you know, something like that. So you've got to learn to be diplomatic. Never say we have the best. Just say we have been told that we have the best pizza in America. And then you just I, line and say, well, maybe Rome, because if you go to Rome, Rome has little pizza shops where you don't even go into the shop. You literally will just pay. You get the slice of pizza and you walk around the streets and everybody, all the Italians will tell you that's the best pizza. 
So I'm going to tell you, anybody that's gone to Rome on that judging panel is going to go, I don't know. I don't know if she's aware that there's pizza in Rome. Okay. So just be a bit more graceful, diplomatic, sit on the fence. My, my background, I'm a journalist. And I think journalists like to be curious, nosy. And um, I'll sometimes trigger conversations because I want other people to be opinionated, but I will always try and sit on the fence because I think journalists are very clever like that. Okay, let's go to Nikita. Have any nails done? I want to know what color they are. They're black, by the way. Ooh, yeah. um, <laughs> so my state is Ohio. We have the most resilient people you will meet, in my opinion. We have <laughs> birth. Halle Berry, LeBron James, two incredible resilient people who have gone on to do incredible things. But our resilience is really highlighted through our farmers. We have a lot of farmers, a lot of rural areas in Ohio, and we have some really gorgeous gardens and hills. So my favorite garden is the Wedrazine Garden, and my favorite hill is the hill outside of the apartment. And my parents all at, excuse me, the hill at my parents' old apartment. I used to sit there with my mom and tell her all my hopes and dreams. And I used to wish that I could represent my state in some way in a beauty pageant. So I'm so lucky to be in a pageant like this. I love that. Okay. You need to formulate the question the opposite way around. You need to say okay. the state is famous for. So we're famous for right. hills and lakes and farms. So you would yeah. You would say, um, Ohio, Ohio, oh, let me mute whoever's talking. Let me know. Sorry, can you, sorry. Oh, it's in the shop. That's okay. Go ahead, sorry. So you would say, Ohio is the home of farms. And we have, then go into what kind of farms you have. You would then go into okay. hills. You would then go into, I would sit and spend time in those areas and of hopes and dreams. And then did okay. you know that Halle Berry, LeBron James started their dreams here? And then okay. So it's the other way around, okay? The state, okay. then people, because the state has been there for 100 years at least, whereas these people have only come yeah. 20, 30 years, 40 years, right? Make sense? Right. Back yeah. Back. Okay, good. Loved it. I also want to know a little bit more geographically about Ohio. I think if I was to Google Ohio now, they would say, oh, let's do it. Let's just, what is Ohio? We have a lot of military people because there's a, a military base there, but I didn't know if that was interesting. Oh, uh, there's military bases everywhere. If we everywhere. Have, yeah. So that's why I was like, I don't really know what else to highlight. The world's largest cuckoo clock, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, sports teams, universities, what is special. So it is the fertile soil. So, uh, soil. so you're known for uh, a rock salt called halite, something I've never heard. Now, that's an interesting fact we don't know, right? Uh, mine okay. from beneath Lake Erie, the state produces about 5 million tons of this salt called halite a year. Now, that's something. So just go into, I threw you on the spot, so maybe you didn't know, um, any goals that I have coached with, I think I'm throwing the state question at them. So, okay. so find things like that. Okay. Let's go okay. to Glynis. I know Glynis is Oklahoma. Yeah. I'm Kansas. Oh, hang on a minute. Ekta, do you want to say something? I think, I think Nikita said Ohio is Haley Berry. Halle Berry. Was, yes. She was Miss World America in the 80s. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. In fact, there you go. Throw that in. Yeah. Okay. She was in Ohio and then Miss World America. And then I think she placed like top eight or something in Miss World. Yeah. Yes. Top six. Right, cool. And actually, I think that Miss World America was held in London and Topshop was the sponsor because I think I remember seeing photos of her wearing a Topshop sash. There you go. Uh, maybe not but mention Topshop because it's no longer around. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So that's a good fact, right? I would definitely finish with that one. Okay, I'll do that one. Okay, but definitely do something about the state first before you do something and someone's famous. Because some judges won't care who's famous. Some judges will. So make sure okay. you're state specific. My state's famous for this. Yeah. Like geographic stuff. Geographic first. 
then so think geographically what you know about the state what you think other okay. people think it's famous for so for me you know okay. and then go into maybe the person that's from there so the person's last okay thank you a lot more before that person okay yeah uh, okay thank you hey glenn is oklahoma i'm kansas oh my god why do i think oklahoma i don't because they're close to each other okay let's do kansas okay um an interesting fact about kansas is that we know we all know wizard of oz was actually came from hang on let me start over sorry okay an interesting fact about kansas is that this is where the wizard of oz was born everybody knows we're not in kansas anymore and in addition we also have um the birth of amelia Earhart here the first woman to fly solo transatlantically across the ocean um, which is very interesting to very prominent women from a very prominent state because Kansas also was the first state to grant women's rights in 1912 before the federal government did in 1919. We also have a church made of grasshoppers, which is interesting because we had an infestation in 1870 where the grasshoppers were two to three inches long and they um, would sweep them up and there were so many, they just decided to build a church from them and pray them away. And it actually worked. The second they started building that church, the grasshopper started going away. I love that. Okay, so you could start this by saying Kansas is famous for tornadoes. And if you click your red heels, you yes. know what I'm about to say next. So have fun with that because even though we're going straight into a film and Dorothy, it's kind of obvious with Kansas, right? That's the only time we can go straight into the film because it put Kansas on the map. I mean, you know, I'm international. And so for me, of course, that's what I know about Kansas. But I would have fun with it. I would say everybody knows that Kansas is a state that has so many tornadoes. Now, if you click your red heels, you may end up where Dorothy went and the Wizard of Oz. So have fun with that because you've got an amazing platform there to just you know go into imaginary world straight away and have fun with your personality so I love everything you said and I love the fact you ended with something that was a bit more kind of um not serious but a church of grasshoppers never heard of it before so you would have had me as a judge on the edge of my seat so I love what you're doing just remember you're the doctor so you can say things facts and serious we need to see the smiles and the laughter. So you've got that with the clicking of the red heels, right? Got and it. Thank you so much. The host would have fun with that. The host, if you looked at the host and said, click your heels, <laughs> right? The host is going to love you. I love agree. It. Thank you. Great job. Let's go to Victoria. Hello. Hey, hey. Okay. So Tennessee is actually known as the volunteer state. Now we've got that name during the war of 1812 when all of the individuals that were a part of the militia that were fighting were actually volunteers, not draftees. Now fast forward a few hundred years, we are home to the Country Music Hall of Fame and also where Dolly Parton got her name and made her debut. Now if Dolly Parton isn't the sweetest peach in, the, in America, I would say as a girl with a huge sweet tooth, I love cotton candy and cotton candy originated from my state of Tennessee. Okay. I feel like we were missing Nashville there. I was waiting. I was on the edge of my seat as somebody sure. that I have been to Nashville only because my connecting flight, I took the cheapest flight once. I won't do it again. <laughs> and my flight to Nashville, my flight then on to London, because I had to get a flight within three days. We all missed our flight. I ended up spending the whole night in Nashville. And the next day I went down the famous street. So you were telling us everything about Dolly Parton, but you missed the word Nashville. And I would have said, um, what Tennessee is famous for is Nashville and Dolly Parton and this and that. But did you know, if we go back to 1812 or whatever year it was, yeah. Okay. I think you've got to start with what the most famous thing is. And then you have to go to the fact to teach somebody. So it's right okay. the other way. Um, if you give 
I mean, I have seen girls do it where they finish the question with the most famous part, but what if you've lost the judge and then they came back to you? You want to keep the judge with you the whole way. So find the most commonality to start the answer with and then go into, I'm going to leave you a fact that you didn't know, right? So Thank you. I, I sat there the whole time. Every time he said Dolly Parton, I was going, okay, she's going to mention Nashville, right? Like this. And the funniest, the funniest thing is the Country Music Hall of Fame is in Nashville and Dolly Parton made her debut in Nashville. So I just got to slip that word in there for you, Liz. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, Dolly Parton definitely, hands down, yes. But then just Nashville. And, and isn't. I mean, there must be more famous things about Tennessee. I mean, hang on, isn't your whiskey? Do you have whiskey? Tennessee? Uh, I know Tennessee is known for moonshine. Is it Jack Daniels? And Tennessee, I think so. Okay, Jack Daniels is known worldwide. So if, for instance, you do not have to bring Jack Daniels up, but if there was a British person on the judging panel, I don't think it's me, but if there is a, an international or European person, Jack Daniels in America is a cheap drink. Jack Daniels in the UK is an expensive drink. We're all like, oh, we love Jack Daniels. So just remember, there are things about your state that are famous in other countries. And so the more you Google about your state, the more you can have fun on stage, right? And I mm -hmm. think Nashville is probably one of the world's most famous streets for having more bars and live music than anywhere else on the planet, correct? Isn't that why all the country music stars and the world of fame and everything is there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so just remember that. That's what I think you'd start with and then go into, but did you know in 18, da, da, da. Okay. And you can Thank even you. find a fact about um, why is Nashville famous for country music stars? When did that happen? Right? Ooh. Like what year and why, why has Nashville in the middle of America been chosen as the country music homeland? Is that what Graceland was as well? Is Grace, no, Graceland wasn't in Tennessee, right? Graceland. Graceland. Yeah. So bring up facts, you know, say in, do you know in 1912, I know I'm making up numbers, but in 1912, that's when country music decided the home was Nashville, Tennessee, right? I love that. And Graceland is in Tennessee. It's in Memphis. There you go. See, I knew that. As in, yeah. that's a big international, people will come to your state to go to Graceland. I yes, in, well, home to Elvis. I was in Miss Hawaiian Tropic in 1990 six or 97 you girls were born about this time i competed miss hawaiian tropic as miss wales in vegas and do you know that there were 120 of us contestants in miss hawaiian tropic and they dressed us all up in elvis costumes on stage at the tropicana and we were all doing an elvis song so for me international people anybody that if any judge is i'm 47 if any judges are 50 60 international you're going to get them with the elvis because they're all going to be like oh my god yeah okay so remember when we find out who the judges are it could be 24 hours before it could be on the day before start thinking about the ages of the judges start thinking where they're from what would be famous for them what would their opinion of tennessee be right country music elvis um i probably know more about tennessee right now than i do the rest of the states she probably got a little bit more from me than the other states, but we can learn. Um, let's go to Jade. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I have a few people talking behind me, but I'll be on in just five Are they seconds. They're helping you, though. Please tell me they're not distracting. They're all helping you. Okay. So my state is, well, I'm not a state, I'm the District of Columbia. And while we're definitely known for the White House, the home of the president, the Capitol building, Lincoln Memorial, and Washington Monument, something that is really special about DC as an aspiring entrepreneur is just how big the entrepreneurship scene is in the city. So if you haven't heard, I'm sure you have because you've been in LA, the founder of Sweet Green actually went to my university and founded the restaurant chain just up the street from where I used to live. The founders of another restaurant called Falafel Inc., which actually uses their business model to advocate for refugees. 
They are also based in DC, right in my home city of Georgetown. And the famous workout brand Solid Core, which is a Pilates slash reformer class, is also founded in DC. So lots of entrepreneurship among with the politics. I love all of that. An international judge is not going to know what Sweet Greens is or Cool Pilates, which is fine. If it's all American judges, you got them. That's totally fine. Okay. And entrepreneurship is great. But I wanted something more. What is your state known for worldwide? Which you did start with, but I needed more embellishment on that. Okay. So let's just have a conversation. Let's go back to what is District of Columbia famous for worldwide? They're definitely famous for the national monuments. So the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, Capitol Building, and the White House, which is home okay. to our president. And the White House, right. So I want facts about the White House. I would choose the White House, it's the most famous for me, um, or the National Monument, um, but I would- it's the, same, it's the same thing, pretty much. It's the National Mall. So it's it constitutes all of the buildings that are in the, federal area okay so for me washington dc is a place i have to go to i've never been so if i was on that judging panel i'd be like oh my god i haven't been to the capital of america and i'm dying to tell me something so i almost want you to give me the facts of did you know the white house was built because of this and it was built in this year like let's grab on to the most famous building there tell us why when it was built, it's a bit like the Statue of Liberty, right? If somebody was talking about New York right now, I hope they would tell me maybe Ellis Island, Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty was a gift from France. Uh, the year it was like, I, I want to know those kind of facts. So for me, I would just never presume people know where you're from. If I asked all of you on the next question, okay, tell me something you know about Wales. I'm sure a lot of you on stage would suddenly go, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Right? So for me, never presume that judges know anything where you come from. You have to literally, there's a fine line between telling someone what they know and telling somebody what they don't know. And that's what a beauty queen has to find. We have to find again the commonality. So the commonality here the most famous thing is the White House, right? So now tell us something about the White House we don't know. What year was it built? I don't know that. Maybe I should know that when I did my American citizen test. I don't know. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> so um, that's where I want you to go, right? Because that's what the judges are going to be thinking with you. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. Okay, let's just do, um, does anybody want to talk about anything for like the last like maybe 20 minutes? Is there anything anybody wants help on anything? Oh, hang on, Hallie. Hallie. Oh, I guess it's Haley, but yes, ma'am. Haley. Yeah. I'm not talking about Hallie Berry, that's why. Haley. Oh, you? Yes, I love her. Yeah, it was actually really good to know that Halle Berry um, competed. I knew she competed in the Miss World America. I didn't know she went on to Miss World. So that was a really good thing to know. I'm so inspired by her. I need to ask you something. Can you come closer yeah. to the camera? Yes, I can. I'm like trying to make sure I'm fully in everything. But yeah, can you hear me now? Is this better? Yeah, it's just the framing. I think everybody. Oh, okay, great. Be... There's things about answering questions like rhythm and mm -hmm. face, you know, mm -hmm. eye contact. These are subliminal things that talk to the subconscious of a judge. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm big on rhythm. So if I coach with you, there's a certain rhythm with answers. So it's right there's a certain yeah. that i've seen over the years that works which is really going deeper with questions and answers which we don't really have time on maybe i'll help you over the next few weeks on that but Haley, yeah. let's go to tell us about your state or your area that you're representing and an interesting fact of course, and thank you for coming back and circling around. Uh, I am obviously representing the state of Colorado, and most people obviously think about Denver as our capital, which is completely true, and we're big in art and big in sports, but I want to turn everyone's attention to a short little drive through the mountains a couple hours away from the city, and there's a small town called Durango, Colorado, and this sits in the middle of mountains, so it's completely in the valley, surrounded by these beautiful mountains any time of year. 
And um, it's full of people who have little shops and there's only about 10 houses there, but there's a very large art community there. So you'll find potters who just live there and sit out and create pot in a studio. There's um, people who make glass um, and all of the things. So you, most people obviously go to Denver, but I want to turn everybody's attention to a small town called Durango, where you can get an insight on what it actually feels like to live in the rivers of Colorado and actually be immersed in the art and then the culture just a little bit more. So yeah, that's my little fun fact about Colorado. Hey, Haley, I love that. The answer's way too long. That's okay, because we're having conversations <laughs> Yeah. So it, I love listening to you and I think Victoria said the same there's a conversational realness um girl next door it's so friendly that all the judges are gonna hands down know how friendly and real you are so you have uh, in your favor like for me I'm already going oh this feels so real right we could sit down we could have a drink you could teach me so much um I would have started with so Colorado is my state. Everybody's heard of Denver, but I want to introduce you to, and the reason right. I want to introduce you to that is because there's a community of artists. And did you know that there's da 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 thousand artists? And then I would go to my button and I'd finish the thing. Right. Okay? Yeah. So that's where I would go with that one. So just for sure. Thank about, you so much. Again, think about your first sentence is the most obvious choice of your state. Mm -hmm. Right. So Tennessee, the most obvious thing you would think of is Nashville, mm -hmm. country music, right? So, you know, um, Minnesota, I think we went to the, well, it's not 10,000 lakes, it's 12,000 lakes, right? So go to the most famous thing. Okay, anything sure. else? Did somebody just come in? I think we did have someone come in. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much. And thank you, Liz, for this session. I can't wait to hop onto the next one, but I'm going to go ahead and hop off to go ahead and head to the baby shower. So I just wanted to say a large thank you, Liz, and everyone on. You guys have a great day and good luck. Thanks, Haley. Yes, bye-bye. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? Okay, let's just have, there are more difficult questions we can go into. I think we'll do that next time. Um, but I just wanna go around, how is everybody feeling? What are you worried about? I know talent and fitness are coming up next. I know some of you won't have a good talent. Don't worry about it. I was telling you, um, Druvy, does Druvy want to say anything? If you do, I think you've just come in. You can. I um, I'm driving right now, but I am um listening. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I know with talent. Listen, I won Miss Great Britain, and I didn't have any talent. I can't sing. And my country, Wales, is famous for singers. Can't sing at all. There was nothing I could do. I took a surfboard on stage and I pretended to teach people how to jump on a surfboard, okay? I was like a laughing stock. I still was able to win. you got to win with your personality. Obviously, you're going to be beautiful. Beauty is subjective. This pageant is about... Um, yeah, Nikita, you can ask a question. Um, go on. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I just had a question about like, for example, like I feel like I I might the way I formulate a question or the way my answers are is like I'm thinking of bullet points in my head. Is there an easier way other than bullet points to like visualize what you're saying like when you're on stage? Because I just don't want to get jumbled up with like a million things I'm trying to get across in the in the question. So I don't think you were online when I showed a mind map. Right. So a, a I it. would be so you get a piece of paper and you put Ohio in the middle of the mind map and then a mind okay. map and you have branches coming off. So you can okay. do this with any subject. Right. You could do this. Okay. With, um, well, you just put the subject in the middle and then you section it off. So you go right. Ohio, okay. farmland. What is famous for? You could then do oh. people that are famous. Halle Berry. So if yeah. you your brain visualizes yeah. the different sections. You could actually study. If, if the question was, tell us an interesting fact about Ohio and who's famous that's come from there, then your mind with a mind map could go straight away to the people. And then you could okay. go back to the other branches. And you would start okay. with the question wherever, you, wherever it was most appropriate. 
And that's how a pageant girl can almost say, I can answer any question with any subject because I can start on the mind map at one o'clock or I can start on it at six, six o'clock, nine o'clock, and I can come back and then go back around. Does that make sense? Okay, that's so good. Yeah, that's so much better than the bullet point. Okay, thank you. Okay, so talent, I was saying, I had no talent at all. Um, you can still win. Personality can win. Beauty with a purpose can win. Your goal when you're in a beauty pageant, say there's 60 girls. I would say usually out of 60 girls, there's only 20 girls that are good enough or really that have everything to win. Your competition is not 60 girls when you go into a pageant. It's not 100 when you go to Miss World. There'll be 100 girls on the Miss World stage. The competition's not really 100. Out of 100, I would say there's about 40 girls that are strong enough to win, right? If they've had good coaching, if they're good in every area of the sports, what you have to do is you've got to figure out where you're going to win. You have to just go, okay, I'm a violinist. That is my thing. I am going to do this talent round like nobody's ever seen it before. Uh, robotics. I am going to do something that is going to be so unique and so special. It's going to stand out. Um, the doctor, you're going to talk about medicine. You're going to teach us something. We're all going to go, wow, she's super clever. So you're going to find what is so unique about you. Because if you come to a pageant and there's 60 girls in Seattle, you're suddenly going to go, oh my God, that girl's so beautiful. She's going to win. I don't, you're going to forget what's unique about you. And I promise you, every girl is your best friend, but every girl wants to win. So you have to find what's unique to you and you've got to hold on to it and you've got to go, that's what's getting me in top 20. Your goal is to get into top 20. Once you're in top 20, it is 30 seconds on stage, your message to the world. Then you've got to go, my message to the world. Now you have to work out, what do you think judges want to hear? What is special about me with my message to the world? What suits the Miss World brand? And how do I get this across in a fun, interesting way? So that's your next goal, top 20. Then if you get into top 10, the question is going to be asked, I think the question is, why are you for Miss World America? Why are you for Miss World? Something like that, right? So again, your mind map, why? Um, and then if you get into top five, it's questions and answers. And that, I already know, Hector and Shri have told us, there's not going to be difficult questions. So, you know, if an earthquake happens that day or the day before, it could be an earthquake question, right? Just remember whatever is happening in the news. It could be that. Um, yeah, so just be aware of that. So, right, let's finish up. How is everybody feeling? Has anybody got any questions for me that I can help you with? No? I have a question. Go on. Um, okay, so I actually have a lazy eye and it's one of my insecurities. It's something that I've been working on since I was very young. And I wanted to know, like you were talking earlier about eye contact and being sure to drive your points with your eye contact. With someone like me, past lazy eye, what would you what would you recommend for me? Hey, you have to record yourself close up like this, and you have to okay. talk to the camera. You have to move your eyes. You've got to figure out how you either acknowledge it or you don't show it. So you have to study your own face. Now, I know there's some girls that do facial jibs. I've seen girls literally stand on stage and do things like, and I'm like, have they ever recorded themselves? You literally have to record yourself. Now, you're looking at me. I don't see a lazy eye at all. So your lazy eye, I actually have a lazy eye too. And in fact, my grandfather was in World War II and he was sent to Italy and he wasn't in the front line because he had a lazy eye. We all have it in my dad's side of the family. And everybody was in the front line going to Italy, died in that war. So the lazy eye in my family saved our life. I, would I have been born? Yeah, my dad was already born. Um, so I'm going to tell you, you work with it, you acknowledge it. Some people are going to have fear and butterflies. Some people are going to feel sick before they go on stage. You have to acknowledge whatever you're terrified of because the other side of the fear is where your success is. The only reason you don't win anything is because of your own mindset and what is holding you back. Now, you already think 
you're at a disadvantage because of that eye. You're not. There's something in your DNA why your family have that. Could be thousands of years ago. Could have been someone was a sniper. Snipers, they will have a usually a stronger or lazy eye. So there's something, use it, say to yourself, is this inherent? Is this DNA? I'm going to ask all my ancestors that are past to give me the strength to battle through that. Does that make sense? That's pretty deep what I'm saying to you. Um, I want you to record your face. I haven't seen it once. Okay. <laughs> on camera. So it may be a bigger thing in your own head than it is. I have seen girls win that I didn't even see coming which is very rare like I can circle girls in Miss World and tell you who's going to be I told Shri who's going to win two days before the pageant she didn't like it I said Shri you're going to come in the top three and I'm going to tell you if you want it you've got to fight when you're on stage you've got to be so good they can't ignore you because Poland is really strong and Shri knew it and she was like I'm having this and I was like right we're going for the win we're going for the win we're going to do this and so your own insecurity is there, but you've got, to, you've got to work through it. Whatever you think is the reason you're not winning is exactly what you've got to tell yourself why you're going to win. Right? Uh, what would be my insecurity? Um, my insecurity, if I was to compete on stage, would be I have more muscular thighs and I don't have abs. So for me, I would be insecure that I'm not going to win in the, in a bikini round, right? I don't think it's bikini now. It can be sportswear. It can be um, swimwear. So for me, I know that that's my weaker. So I would go, I have to love that. I have to not care about that. And I'm going to put extra energy into it. So for you, when you're looking at the judges, make your smile more important than your eyes. Maybe your hands, right? Okay. So you've got to find, you've got to record yourself. You've got to record yourself this close and you've got to go, right, this time I'm going to do it and I'm not going to care. This time, this time I'm going to do it where it shows up. And then you've got to see how bad it is and you've got to go, okay, it's not that bad, right? You, you've got to push through and go, actually, I can disguise it. I can do it this way. It's a bit like when I used to stand on stage, I would find a certain angle, right? So I was working with the fact that my thighs are like more muscular than the girls that were so super skinny. Right. And I even had girls afterwards say, you know what I love about you, Liz? You were like a real woman's body. I heard that. You know, I was like a role model for other people instead of being like, you know, my best friend was five foot 11. She modeled in Italy and she modeled for like Prada and Gucci. And she was like androgynous, dark hair, short hair and like a boy's body. But she was five foot 11. I was I thought it was five foot eight. I'm actually five foot nine. I don't know. How for years I was saying I was five foot eight. So just literally go with what you've got. Okay. Does that help you? Yes. Um, I was told not to acknowledge it. So that was one of the reasons why I was just trying to get another opinion, you know, because usually when I go into a room, I do mention that I have a lazy eye so that people know that if my eyes wandering, it's not because I'm looking at someone else behind you, but it's because my eyes lazy. But I was told not to acknowledge it. So I'm just trying to get other opinions. <laughs> Funny, I wouldn't necessarily bring it up unless there was a direct question saying, what are you insecure about? And then I would say, if I'm going to be really honest with you judges, I think I have a lazy eye, but I don't think any of you would have noticed it. And I don't think it's important because what really matters is what's inside and what I'm seeing and sharing with the world. That's the, I wouldn't acknowledge it. I would acknowledge it for your own fear in your own training. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Hector, should we end with you? Oh, you're muted. I had a question. Oh, sure. Where's the question? Marco. Did I say that right? I'm Not really me. terrified of yes. language. My Not me, Athena. She was raising her hand. Oh, Athena? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I was trying to use the raise your hand feature. I missed that. Oh. On this, and I don't know if it works or not. I don't even know. It was worth a shot. But my question was, do you have any advice for people who are transitioning from other pageants where 
myself, I'm coming from Miss USA, and I know there's a lot of other contestants as well who are girls from Miss USA, and it's quite different, you know, what they're looking for, and so Miss World is a whole new um, arena, and I'm just wondering if you have any advice. Okay, so anybody that's done Miss USA and Miss Universe, you guys are going to be so fierce on stage, you basically pushing the other girls out. The other girls have to learn, and they have to watch a lot of videos of Miss USA and Miss Universe. The difference is Miss Universe is too fierce. Miss World is softer, more feminine, nicer girls. Now, if you come on stage with the sexiest, most revealing dress, you may scare some judges away because I think there will be judges that only know the Miss World brand, may maybe not know the Miss Universe brand so much. So I don't want as sexy and as revealing. Um, there's a very fine line with that. I also think Miss World being a British-owned brand, Miss Universe being American, oh no, uh, Filipino brand own Thai brand own there, right? Um, I think British people tend to be a little bit more reserved. We think there's a class, there's a snobby factor with it. So it's a little bit more not polite, it's a little bit more let's just say reserved, you think more about your questions, you're more logical, it's not so much in your face, da 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 does this make sense for you? So it's just really honing your questions to be more intelligent, more factual based, um, statistics, facts, we're going to love. You don't need to do like the whole hair flicking, you just minimize that a little bit. Um, and Miss World is more about what's inside than outside. So the girl that could win Miss World America may not necessarily have the sexiest, most stunning, most expensive dress, but they will have a personality on the microphone that comes across that they are the nicest, sweetest, kindest girl. So think of it this way. Miss World is the girl next door that everybody loves. And Miss Universe is the girl that's almost so superstar, she's uh, impossible to approach. That's how I think of it. So just come down a little bit and be more human. You can be fierce and you can do the walk and you can look incredible in your high heels, doing the stage, doing the turns, which is what I think Miss Universe girls can do. But when it comes to being interviewed, acknowledge the moment, more personality, fun, look at the judges directly, be softer, kinder, um, think more. You're just more human than, than I think this universe is. It's just, and those are just judgments which aren't 100% correct, but they're just judgments that I understand of the differences with the brands. Anybody else got an opinion on that? I think it's more about likability of the girl. Like everyone wants a capable girl who would be resourceful and self-sufficient and finding ways to promote herself. So we want a nice and capable girl, not a fierce and capable girl. Yeah. And I would also say usually Miss Congeniality would never win a pageant. But Miss Congeniality is more likely to win Miss World than a Miss Universe. Right? Hope that helps you. Yes. And, and be genuinely kind. Don't be selective in your kindness. Because all of us think that we are all very kind. And all of us think, no one thinks that, oh, I am a cruel person. Even the most cruel person would think that, he or she is justified in her behavior. So be genuinely kind in your interactions. You may not win, but you could you could be representing your state next year, or maybe you could be our state director when you have aged out. So don't just have the focus that 
if I don't win on October 5th, that's the end of my life. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be so mad and angry. I put in so much effort and this was not fair and all other thoughts that you may have. So be prepared that I'm going to lead with love and grace no matter what the outcome is, because you cannot change the outcome anyways. So have your legacy of grace when you depart from Seattle. Yeah. Hey, everybody good? I have a question. Yeah. So I am I know you said that usually by looking at the girls, you can tell who's going to make it to top 20. So as a judge, what are the qualities and attributes that help the judges to recognize that you know this this is the girl she's got what it takes to win and sh she represents that kindness and um what we're looking for so for me when I look at everybody there's an instinct and a feeling that I get it's an energy it's almost bigger than I can explain in words but what I'm looking at is the all-round package so is the girl beautiful does she have a lovely smile is she engaging does she use eye contact um what's her platform what's her talent how's her sport so I when we get to Miss World whoever the girl is I'm going to study every girl on Instagram I'm going to start watching usually for me I can make my mind up Miss World has something called head-to-head -head challenge I will watch head-to-head -head, and there's usually five or six girls and I will write notes and I will work out there's always one girl that's very kind of, I want to do the talking, I want to do the talking. And that person usually annoys me. And I'm like, they've got to be annoying everybody else that's watching. So there's a fine line with being the one that's supposed to say, oh, thank you. It's great to be here. But also there's a very fine line. You can't be the pushy girl, but you have you can't sit there and not be the girl that doesn't talk either. So it's almost like, there's a balance with confidence, which I can pick up from energy. I can pick up from actually even somebody's photo. It's almost like there's a security in that person that they know they're special. They know they've got something to offer the world and they can't wait to share their gift with the world. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm picking up. And I will study. I think it's in the eyes for me. I think it's mainly in the eyes and the smile. And I know that when you come to Seattle, there's going to be judges floating around the hotel. They may stick their head and they may watch. When I, Whenever I judge a pageant, I want to see the girls when they don't know I'm a judge. And I'll stick my head into maybe the rehearsals. I look at the girls when they're eating in the restaurant and I'm picking up the vibration of the girl, whether I think she's a genuine person or not. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a winner. Um, I've known a lot of people before they became became famous. I grew up with Catherine Zeta Jones. I used to date her brother. My dad plays golf with uh, her dad died. Um, there was something about Catherine where all eyes in the room were on her. I was very good friends with Lewis Hamilton, who was a go-kart racer. McLaren signed him. He became world number one formula driver I knew him before he was famous um I knew that that was his star there's people that you just meet in life where they have this comfort about them that they're gifted they're exceptional and nobody is a competition the minute you start seeing a girl as your competition your vibration and success level changes. And it's for that what I'm I'm looking for that person that is so secure no matter what and so friendly. Like I'm gonna tell you, Sheree's not on this call right now. Sheree sometimes struggles with what other people think of her because Sheree doesn't really understand how beautiful she is in this planet. She's so, I say to her, Shri, if you understood you walk into a room almost like an angel with wings, you will understand that other people sometimes are uncomfortable by that. She doesn't understand how much she shines. And a lot of people that have that certain je ne sais quoi will dim their light because other people have met them in their life and they've thought, 
I don't think that person likes me. No, if you've ever been in a room where you've gone, ooh, or if you got bullied in school, right? So for me, I remember three girls picking up the phone and saying to me, I don't know why you think you're so special. And I remember thinking at the time they were bullying me. And I was like, I don't even think I'm special. So sometimes if you're somebody that's so confident and secure, other people may not like that, but you can't dim your light. That's what makes you special. So you have to realize sometimes the girls that shine are the girls that other people feel uncomfortable by. Now, Sheree is excellent at making everybody feel comfortable because she's been in a place where she knows that she hasn't always felt comfortable herself. But in the same way, she will sometimes dim her light and she'll not realize what's so special about her, right, Ekta? And I gotta tell you, I will say it hands down, not because I work with Ekta now. I have told Ekta and Shri this from the day I met them and they got to know them. I've never met a beauty queen like Shri. Her heart, and I think it's because what she's gone through with the pacemaker from a young age, then she went through facial burns of a car accident. She learned very early on how humble to be that she hasn't really understood how special she is. She's still stuck in that humble space of being of service, which is what makes her so beautiful. So Miss World, I think, is a little bit more humble in this universe. That's my opinion. So I'll end on that. Wow, everybody's totally quiet. Ekta, anything you want to say before we go? And I do place a lot of value on being humble and grateful and not being entitled and and look, be at peace. Whatever happens during those three days, just have a certain peace, grace, joy, happiness. Enjoy that because you cannot control the outcome. So come come with a joyful heart. But be so good we can't ignore you and win. How can 50 girls win? <laughs> well, that's what you got to think, girls. you got to say I'm the winner. That's it. Okay. Can't wait to meet you all in person. I'm so excited. You all look so stunning. I love your smiles. Well done for staying on. And uh, I will see you the next time we do coaching. Anyone have questions for Liz? So nice to meet you for the first time. I'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you, Liz. Thank you so much. Bye. This was very Thank helpful. You so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.